everyone. Thanks for coming uh, to my presentation. Uh, I'm going to talk about web application localization, uh, means uh, translation of web application to other languages. And um, I'm from Tolji, which is a company uh, which develops uh, open source tool for localization of web applications. Uh, we are mostly fo focusing on modern JavaScript frameworks like React or Angular. But uh, if you have application in pure JavaScript, you can use our, our Tolji uh, tool as well. So I don't speak German, uh, sorry for that. But uh, I can try, if you're going to ask in German, I can try to answer. Maybe I will understand. So, OK, let's uh, jump right in. So what is Tolji? Uh, Tolji is basically open source tool, uh, which is aiming to simplify localization process as much as possible. Uh, we are developing tool which uh, basically aims to remove non not necessary processes from localization. And we try to relieve developers from the tasks which are related to localization. And what I'm going to cover in this talk so I'm going to show you the common localization process, which you may be, if you are a web developer, developer then maybe uh, you are localizing your applications like that. And then I'm going to show you how you can do that with Toji, uh, how you can simplify the process with our tool. And then I'm going to talk about ICU message format, which is a very powerful format for uh, actually formatting the messages, uh, the translated strings, the values. Uh, then I'm going to show you how to prepare the production, uh, the application, which is using Toji for production. And I'm going to talk a little bit another, about another tools which are on market now and which you can use as well. Uh, so let's jump to the common localization process. Uh, there are like three, uh, three cases when you are modifying uh, localization data when you are translating your app. Uh, the first case is that you adding new text to translate. If you are adding new text to translate, you have to go to uh, your code base and you have to add some key. The, the key could look like this. So you can uh, add something like this to your code and then you have to modify localization data. It depends on on the library you use or the, the principle you follow, but every time you have to add the key to localization data. Some libraries or tools uh, use extraction, so it goes through your code and gets all the all the localization string and strings, and then you are translating them separately, or you can just just add the string in your localization data. But both of the uh, types uh, like some work for developer. Uh, then you have to go to the localization data and translate the key to your mother language. Sometimes uh, if you are not a native English speaker, maybe you are translating, translating, translating the string also into English and mother language. So you are basically editing two files. And then it, it, uh, you have to check it if it was uh, translated correctly and if nothing is broken. So that's the adding of new new key, new text to translate on your website, web application. Another case is modifying the existing translation, which uh, could be tricky because sometimes you don't know uh, which key is uh, related to which translation. So if some manager or somebody tells you to change some specific specific test, uh, text in your web application, then you probably won't know which uh, key it actually is and you should go to you must go to your code and find out which key is it uh, which could take some time you have to open localization file again modify the value and then you have again check if it was translated correctly and uh, the worst case is when you are letting a translator to translate your application so uh, in that case, you have to take the localization data from your code and send it to the translator. Sometimes you have to 
like modify it to generate some Excel file or maybe CSV, then they can translate it. And then you are probably going to answer a lot of questions about the context of the data. Because if you are sending files like that, there is completely missing the context. So the translators just don't know where the actual translation is on the page. So if you are doing that, then you probably can get translations like this. Uh, the first two are just like funny translations from uh, I found from English to German, but the third case is something which is uh, more common, more common problem in localization process. And then that's, we have like English word, which means multiple things, for example, in German and uh, the translator have to choose correctly which one is it, but without context of the, of the translation of the key, they just don't know how to do that. And they have to choose or they have to ask you which context is, uh, which, which term is correct. Uh, so that's the problem. Uh, yeah, and you can after maybe get translations like this. Uh, so that's something you don't want. And if you get these wrong uh, or right or correct translations, then you're gonna probably take them and append them back to the code. So we're gonna again then bundle them with the code, which is again some work for developer. And this process going back and forward and it's very complicated like this hey Jude lyrics. So uh, we in Tolji are trying to simplify the process as much as possible. And we would like to developers to develop their code and we would like translate uh, en enable translators just to translate and not to worry about format of the of the strings or to work with excel file or csv to import them in their tools and stuff like that so in Tolji, we provide a complex tool uh, which enables you to do something like this uh, in web applications i've got uh, this web application, which is implemented in React, and it's simple to do to do web application when I can add uh, some task, for example, create presentation, and that's it. So that's some example application where uh, where I'm gonna uh, explain the principles of of Tolji Toolkit of Tolji uh, JavaScript SDK. So what I can do with this application when I'm using Tolji is that if I hit Alt and go to some text, which is translated by Tolji, by Tolji then I can just uh, replace the actual value right in the application. So I can add some text here. And if I save it, it's there, it's, it's right there. And I don't have to go to my localization files i don't have to change anything i directly can see what happened so it's like game changer because there is no more work for developers to like find the key in the in the localization localization data or anything and also i can provide demo instance of the web application to my translators and they can go through the application click on the on the stuff and translate it directly so that's the core principle of uh, what we are trying to achieve in Tolji. And now I'm gonna show you how to, how to work with this application or how to develop something like this. Uh, I've got web application, which is implemented in React. Uh, so this code is JSX, uh, as you can see, but we have uh, also integration library for Angular, so don't worry if you are Angular developer, or if you don't use any any JavaScript framework and you just just use uh, plain JavaScript, then it's not a problem. You can you can use Tolji even without any framework, and I will show you uh, these options later. But now I'm gonna show you how to add another another string to my web application. So, for example, I would like to add string "Hello People," uh, something which some some key which is gonna 
say hello to you. And this P component here, it's a React uh, T component, tells uh, the Toji SDK that here is actual key to translate. So now if I'm going to switch to the web application, mm -hmm, there is uh, already a value. So I'm going to delete it. No, sorry. Uh, so I can translate it uh, directly in, in the code by clicking on, on the translation on the key and I can add the value. So now I translated the value both in English and Czech and as you can see it works. So uh, that's how easy you can, uh, how easily you can translate stuff in Toji. Uh, yeah, what, what you also can do with Toji, yeah, that, uh, uh, we are providing this platform where you can also translate the, the values. So if I'm changing uh, the, the stuff here, for example, I added the hello here, it's also in the platform. So all data, to look, uh, all, all localization data are downloaded from the platform to your application. So you are actually using uh, the data from REST, REST API when you are developing application with Toji. So when I'm gonna change it back again, so, or I will delete this hello uh, and I will save it and then go here and refresh it, it's changed. So uh, that's the way how it works. You have multiple options, how to, how to modify the values if you are using Toji. Um, you can also add some screen, so screenshots to, the, to your keys so your translators then can see what happens, what, uh, wh where, the, where the key is in, the app, uh, in the, your application actually placed. So then they know what context it is and they can translate it correctly. So no more wrong translations. Uh, now I would like to show you how to actually set up the project. Uh, what, what you have to do if you want to use Toji in your project is actually pretty easy. Uh, one thing you have to do is that you uh, need to wrap your your React code if you are using React, then you can use this Toji provider. But it the similar way it works in in Angular. So if you want to use Toji, you have to wrap your code in this Toji provider, where you can provide API key and API URL of your REST API of the Toji Toji REST API Toji platform. Uh, then you have to provide this uh, UE, U, UI uh, para, parameter, which tells Toji where it can find the, the UI package. It's package which uh, contains the actual dialogue, which like pop-ups when you are out click some translation. So the UI package is actually the, the code or the bundle with, with UI, which is optional and you don't want to uh, provide it in production mode. So that's the reason why there is uh, another property for that. And if you would like to use like automatic language detection from your system, then you have to provide also available languages to tell Toji from which languages it can choose the value. Uh, to get your, your Toji provider component, you have to install some packages and you can read about it in our documentation page. So if you would like to use it with React, for example, which is my case, then you can go to our documentation and just follow this uh, installation guide. So you have to install uh, a Toji React package and Toji UI package. If you are using it with Angular, you can use it similarly. There is like NGX package and you're just gonna use uh, this construction uh, for uh, for your ng module, and then 
you can use Dolgy with Angular, or you can just use it with NPM if you use another framework and you can use your own implementation if you want to. So that's the setup. And now I would like to talk about ICU message format because what I showed you here, like about uh, providing a new, new key, it's pretty simple, but the fun part starts when you would like to pass parameters into strings. So let's say that I would like to provide some, instead of hello people, I would like to uh, render how many people are here. So to do that, I'm gonna pass a parameter to the translation, uh, which is gonna be people count. And I'm gonna say there is like 10 people. And here I can uh, change the value. So it's gonna render the proper way. Now there is no parameter, so there is still like hello people. But when I'm gonna change it to this, So here is 10 people, it's gonna render here is 10 people because again, I told uh, the message formatter that it should replace the parameter people count with number 10. This is pretty easy. If I would like to translate it in check, then I'm gonna say get to people count. Which is uh, which is gonna show and uh, I have typo here. So now it works also in check. And yeah. So yeah, it's also wrong. It should be here are 10 people, so sorry. <laughs> so now it's correct. Cool. So we have we have correctly uh, translated. Our sentence here are 10 people, but uh, what happens if we put here one? Then if I'm gonna refresh it or not. Yeah, so now it's rendered like here are one people, uh, which is wrong. We need another form to uh, to render it correctly. And that's where ICU message format is very powerful. And also we have a great support for ICU message format in, in our platform. So if I'm gonna refresh it to load the new translations, uh, I have here this message, maybe I will uh, zoom, maybe I will do this thing so you can see it better. And now I can edit uh, this thing to render different thing when uh, there, there will be one or two people. So I can tell the message formatter that the value people count is plural. So in case it's plural, I can specify the actual forms which are rendered for different values. So if there is zero people, I can uh, render something like here are no people. And I can keep the here here and I will just change the, uh, the second part and I will keep the dot and the in the end. So here are no people when zero people is here. This uh, magic thing tells the formatter that if exactly zero people are here, it should render uh, this, this form. When one person he is here, I'm going to render something like that. 
So he is one person. And if there is any other amount, I'm going to render uh, here are the amount uh, people. So in the right side, I actually added the, the string and on the left side, I can see uh, how it happened, what, what, what is happening in each case. So here I can check with examples what's, uh, what's going to be the result of the translation of every form. So now I cover every form in English and you can say maybe uh, that you don't need it, but I will show you that probably you need something like that if you want to have uh, correct plural forms. But now I'm going to show you it's really working. So here is one person. Now it's rendered correctly according to parameter I provided here. So when I'm going to show when I'm going to change it to zero, again, I have correct form again. Uh, maybe you can say that you don't need it because you can do the same thing with ifs and else's with your uh, with your code. You can like check if the value is maybe if it's zero, you can render another form and you can do it in your code. But uh, you should know that there are, there are other languages. There are, there is not just English or German. In both of these languages, it's easy. But for example, in Czech, uh, it works completely differently. So if you've got uh, text like this, I'm going to copy it for now. And I'm going to show you that in Czech language, we need another form. Because if the value, if the value people count is between two and four, there is another form which we have to use. There is different form between two and four which uh, makes the process a little bit more complicated. And if you want to do it with ifs and else's, then it's going to be very hard. And uh, this means that you have to cover every language separately. And this is going to provide a really lot of lines of code. For example, in Arabic language, there are, there are like six forms which you should cover. So the Arabic language is even more complicated. So if you think that you don't need this, then you should really consider using ICU message format because it's very strong. Uh, we have some uh, documentation page about that where you can see uh, the uh, plural forms, like it's here. So there is also many form, which we didn't use in the example, which is used for fractions. And uh, there is a lot of more in the documentation page. Uh, but also with the ICU message format, you can uh, change the values uh, uh, like more comp in more complicated way. You can use, you can combine the the forms and the types of the parameters. So if you, for example, you, you can have multiple parameters and you can combine the forms. So you can also have this select type of parameter, which is gonna then which is going to work like uh, like switch uh, command in in C or in JavaScript, or you can have like date formatters, which is going to format the date according to the language, according to local. So it's really a very powerful format. So that's uh, it from ICU, and now I'm going to show you how to how to add new language your project because uh, I'm, I just show you how to like uh, translate stuff in languages we, we already had. But another use case is like adding new language. So what I have to do is, first of all, I have to add the language in my, in my platform. So I'm going to go to project settings, anthology platform, uh, or two languages, sorry, and I'm going to add uh, German as a language. And now uh, I'm going to prepare my project to actually uh, allow, allow my users to switch to German. So I'm going to add German to available languages here. 
to tell Dolce that it could uh, choose from language. And also, I'm going to add German to this language switcher. Yeah, and now and when I go to my application, then maybe it's already not. So I'm going to refresh it. And now I have also German here. If I now switch to German, nothing happened because there is fallback language. English is fallback language, so everything which is not find, uh, which is not found in, in German, then it's going to be rendered in in English. You can change it in, in configuration, but we can uh, stick with that right now. And I'm going to show you how now to translate it. So I can uh, I can translate it like uh, this. I can click on each on each text in my application and can change it to, uh, at, uh, I can add the German translation. So I can add hello uh, for uh, minor to up. So, yeah, and I have German text. I can do this with every string on the, on the web page. But I'm going to import it because I already prepared the German strings and I hope it's, it's going to be correct. So I have here the German uh, translations exported. I'm going to, there is conflict because I just added uh, the German string for one text. So I'm going to resolve it. I'm going to select this one and now I can import it. And now when I'm going to refresh it, it's hopefully going to be German and it is. So that's how you can simply translate your application to new language. Uh, you have multiple options. You can also do it with, in the platform so you can send it to your, uh, to your translator and then the translator can do it in here. Uh, but I had like uh, the, the strings prepared so I didn't do that. Uh, I will stop a little bit in the platform where you also have like multiple options how to work with the the strings. You can all you can here like review the strings. So if you have your uh, proofreader, then uh, they can go through the application and uh, tell which is which uh, key which translation is reviewed, or they can add some comments like this is wrong and then uh, anybody else like translator will see that uh, something should be changed here so that's basically it from the platform you can also add more users you can set up permissions and stuff like that so Last thing from the dem demo, I'm going to show you how to prepare your application for production because this this uh, in context editing editing is made for uh, development use or maybe for translators, but you can't like allow users in production to change your localization data. That wouldn't be cool because you don't want anybody to change your text. So when you want to provide uh, uh, when you want to provide production build of your application, then you have to run Tolgi in production mode. And to switch Tolgi to production mode is uh, that you don't have to provide you cannot provide API key. Never should leak your API key because uh, it's gonna it's gonna then allow the users who get it to, to change the, the strings. So you don't want to provide it. I'm going to comment out this line, but uh, normally I would like edit this .env file when I can like re remove it. And then uh, what else I have to do? I have to provide the static files, the exported JSON files to, to get to like give Tolji the actual translations for production mode. And then I have to pro provide the data to the Tolji provider so it can find it and use it. 
uh, I have a few options how to do that. And uh, first of all, I will show you how to get the data from Tolchi platform. So I'm going to go to export section and I will export the data. So I'm getting this zip file, which is full of uh, translations, which I can use. And then I can take the data and copy them into my project. I already did it, so they are here in SRC I18N folder. And now I can uh, I can use them. Uh, I have three options, three options how to use them. The first option is which I would recommend for this case is provided as uh, uh, providers, so it can be imported uh, in runtime. So when I add for example, this in, uh, English translations. I will use dynamic import feature. And I will tell the Webpack compiler that the data uh, can be found in here. And I will do the same thing with the, another two languages. So I will do it with Czech language and also with German. Now let's see what's going to happen. If I'm going to switch back to the application. Now you can see it, it's working even without API key and with uh, provided translations. I'm going to show you one more thing what happened when i used uh, the the providers then my localization data are are provided as these chunks so the webpack compiler which i use uh, with my like create react app application uh, so it provides the localization data as chunks so it's downloaded when just when i need it so if i'm going to switch to check now the the check chunk was downloaded just when i switched to the language so it's best option when you need when you don't need ssr when you don't need the the data import before because it saves uh, the traffic and it saves the uh, the bundle sizes so it's probably faster. So, but if I need SSR or stuff like that, I probably need to provide the data statically without dynamic import. So which I can do this, the same thing, but I'm not going to provide it as, as providers, but I'm going to provide it, uh, it as like static object, which is was, which was imported before. So I'm going to import the English translations, or I can do it like this. SRC. Like this, English. Take language and also German. And I'm not going to provide it as like these factories or providers, but I'm going to just pass the values. So now it will work the same. So if I will refresh, it worked as well, so I can switch languages. Or I have made a mistake here, probably. Yeah. So now I have correctly imported all bundles or JSONs with my localization data. But the difference is that, as you can see, nothing is, uh, there is no request, nothing is loading in runtime, and everything is preloaded. So the main bundle, main chunk, JS, is, uh, is larger, and uh, there are no translations. So 
if you have like large translations, uh, if you have application with a lot of localization data, then it's better to use the dynamic import. So that was preparing uh, for the prediction. Again, never leak your API key. Uh, this would be a problem and you will enable your users then to translate your uh, or change your text on your live web application. So this could be a problem. Yeah, so that's it from the demo. Uh, as you maybe noticed, Toji is using REST API. So the, in development mode, you are getting your, your localization data from REST, REST API. Uh, it has also the web application, which is also communicating with, with the REST API uh, to manage the translations. So this is the web application when you can uh, do the management of the projects and you can modify the values. And finally, there are the SDKs, which are also uh, requesting data from the REST, REST, REST API and the uh, the SDKs are the integration libraries which are which are you using for the uh, for the application development. OG is using single source of truth, so everything, every translation you you use, it's uh, downloaded from the REST API, and there is like. Uh, th there is not recommended like to change uh, some other data you can the data you can store the data in vcs uh, in case for example if you have backend developers which don't have to change uh, the localization data or something then maybe uh, you can just provide the data in vcs and they uh, just will be not enabled to to modify data in tolg platform or you can just uh, just provide the, the access to all your developers and then uh, then the then you don't have to store the data in VCS uh, but in your pipeline in your continuous integration tool it could be just just uh, added to your final production build uh, you can you can deploy it OG locally which I'm gonna show you because uh, it's another nice nice feature of Tolgy uh, that you can deploy it locally and you don't have to, to bother with uh, with authentication with authorization and you can just jump right, jump right in so when it started wait a few seconds so now it started and when I'm going to open the, the Tolgy I just ran with this command there is no authentication section and you can just use it without any uh, without any like uh, management for for users and stuff like that. You can just your project, and you can go and use it uh, for your local purposes without any configuration and stuff like that. So it's pretty easy to start with Tolgy like this. If you would like to uh, to use it on your local computer. If you would like to use it on your cloud infrastructure, you can deploy it uh, on your on your cloud or, or on your servers. And we have like prepared uh, Docker Docker Compose file, which we, you can use, uh, and you can read about it in our documentation. And there is also like a lot of uh, properties which uh, you can use for configuration of Tolgy instance. You can also run it with Java. So if you don't want to run it with, with Docker for some reason, then you can use Java and configure it with environment properties. So that's the cloud infrastructure deployment. And if you if you don't want to deploy it yourself, you can use Tolgy Cloud. Uh, it's instance deployed by us, uh, which is where, where are not uh, signups enabled right now, but we will enable them in a few days. So then you will be able to register, but if you want to get your account, like right now, you can send me an email and I, I will create an account for you if you would like to use it on, on our cloud. 
uh, but we just don't have like uh, terms and conditions set up so we don't want to we don't want everybody to register so what's the future of toji uh, we are gonna release the first table version in a few days so it's uh, not even released that's maybe what i should uh, tell you before but uh, we are still before first release and uh, we are going to release it until end of September. Uh, from the features, uh, we are already implementing automatic screenshot generation to generation feature. So you will be able to generate screenshots from your web application uh, like uh, directly from, from the dialog window you've seen here. So there will be like a take screenshot button and you will be able to uh, provide the screenshot without manually like taking screenshot then uh, highlighting the the key and then like uploading it manually in the platform and you will be able to do automatically for example when you as the developer are uh, adding the key uh, then we're gonna implement enhancements and sug suggestions from your feedback so if you would like to use Tolgy right now uh, we will be ha very happy for for your feedback and we will try to implement it as fast as possible and in next three months we also want to uh, to uh, implement support for glossaries translation memory and automated translations which are uh, which are functions which will help uh, translators to easily translate the stuff or for example the feature of automated translations will ena enable developers to like pre-translate the whole, um, whole application and then just uh, some proofreader could check it or something like that so that will uh, save a lot of time to both developers and translators and we would like to su support also mobile and desktop apps uh, which uh, will be also a tricky part because that's not that easy how it is on the web's uh, web page because for example on mobile device you don't have you don't have way how to click on elements or something like that so there will be no possibility like out clicking but we are thinking about other ways how to do that and we would like to provide uh, plugins for uh, integrated development environments and also for design tools like figma uh, to to enable for example designers to like to like to add the translation keys even before the application is uh, is implemented by developers we use kotlin uh, and spring boot on backend, we use uh, PostgreSQL as production database. We use TypeScript, React, and Materi Material, Material UI on uh, front end. And we use Docker and Kubernetes for our deployment. And uh, yeah, there are other tools. Uh, most of the tools are proprietary on the market currently. Uh, maybe you know Crowdin. Crowdin is a tool which is targeting an open source project, but it's not open source itself. So if you want to translate your software with Crowdin, then you are going to provide all, all your localization data to Crowdin. Uh, so you can you cannot just like deploy it on your local uh, local computer or your cloud infrastructure and stuff like that you always gonna pay for that if you don't want to use it uh, as like for your open source project and, and stuff like that there is also localized which is uh, not even uh, not even targeting an open source but they have pretty nice ui and they are like uh, one of the leading companies in the field right now with crowding i think and there's also phrase and many more uh, from the open source world, there is Weblade and, and Pontoon. The Weblade is, uh, is mostly for get text, uh, like get, get text a world of, of messages. It's a little bit different tool and it's not like focusing that much on in-context localization. So it's not that much focusing on the 
I would say on, on the easifying the process, but it's focusing more on on uh, like the management of localization and on working with Git. So it works fine with Git. And then you can like uh, commit into in, into your Git repository from WebLite. And there is also Pontoon, which is uh, which is new tool from Mozilla, and uh, it's it's made for their community uh, translating of their products. But yeah, it's open source, and I guess it works fine. So there are many options what to use on the market. And we are uh, another one. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's it from me. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if you want to read uh, documentation, you can find it on uh, tolg.io. If you would like to contact me, don't worry. Uh, this is my email my email address. If you want to use tolg or if you want me to help you with integration to your projects, I will be very happy to help you. Uh, I will be also happy for, for any kind of feedback, for any kind of suggestions. Uh, as a new project, we also we will be also very happy for like uh, your stars on GitHub. And yeah, uh, that's it. So thank you for attention.